It is often one of the things that my students struggle with the most when designing their brand and graphics. What fonts should I use in my business, in my logos, in everything? And so in today's episode of Seriously in Business, I want to cover a few of the key things that I love to teach my students around how they can choose the right fonts for their business because choosing the right fonts can be the difference between a business that looks professional and a business that looks a little bit uh, less professional, a bit sloppy and a little bit amateur. It can also be the difference between how your business feels. So how a consumer or a client or a follower or a someone in as a stranger assumes your business is what they assume your business is like what kind of vibe they want you to have what kind of vibe they want your business to have and those things can all be done through the fonts that you choose so it really really does matter the fonts that you use in your business and let's get into some of the tips that i recommend around how you can choose the right ones for you So hi, if we haven't met before, my name is Jackie. I am a graphic designer who specializes in coaching business owners and how they can make their own incredible brand and graphics, making sure that instead of not showing up in your business because you're too scared, because you're too embarrassed, because you're too held back and you're wasting too much time, I want to help give you the tools, the keys and the confidence to show up really confidently in a way that's going to grow your business, not with graphics that are going to deter and detract from your business and its value. And so fonts is a really, really big one that I come across like every single person who's making the business graphics has to come across, has to think through what fonts am I using and kind of make this decision for their business. So I'm going to cover a few different aspects of this. Firstly, some rules around what kind of fonts you need to pick and how you do that. And then also kind of the application around that. I want to start with the application because I think it kind of works backwards. So things that you need to know first. One, you need to use the same fonts in all of your different business graphics. The same fonts in your logo versus your Instagram versus your website versus flies. All of these different things should all use the same font. So you want to make sure you're using the same font across every single touch point in your business. This creates incredible consistency and recognizability in your business. Um, and like, I could go on for about 20 minutes around this point in itself, but I will not. Um, but in essence, make sure you're using the same fonts everywhere. The next thing you want to make sure you do is not pick too many fonts. When we pick too many fonts, the design gets too busy, it becomes um, really cluttered and it becomes really hard to use. And as a business owner, we want our designs to be really easy to use so we can save time, so we can actually just post to get it done, get it out there and move on with our lives rather than thinking and second guessing what our graphics are looking like and trying to make them look right because we've got too many fonts that are just not working together. So those are two things you must need to remember around your business. Always use the same fonts everywhere and only pick two to three fonts in your graphics. What I recommend is choosing one font for your headings, one font for what I call your accent font. Um, this is often a cursive kind of font, but it doesn't have to be by any means. Um, and also one font for your body text. Um, there's some caveats here. Firstly, you could have the same font for all three of these different applications. Um, say for example, you choose an all caps bold version of your font for your headings. You choose a lighter, lighter kind of smaller case, um, thinner font for your subheadings and just a normal version for your body text. That's totally okay. Or you can have three totally different fonts, but the idea, or you can have two fonts that are the same, like your body text font might be the same as your heading font, but just your heading font is ginormous. Um, and so, but in essence, if you're picking two to three fonts, it's going to make your branding look far more cohesive um, and really easy to design. And so um, that's kind of how I love to just phrase it out. There are so many other ways you can do this, but in essence, as a business owner, you need to keep things simple. You need to keep things easy for you to do, and you need to keep things recognizable for your audience. And doing those three kinds of fonts and those three kinds of styles for your fonts is the way that I find works best for my students. And so just remember that as you kind of go into this next section. So now I want to chat to you about how you can pick the right fonts for your brand and for your business. So there is a lot of things you can consider here. But in essence, firstly, I want you to make sure you listen or watch my episode on the wow model. So how I recommend you're choosing what your brand should look like in the first place. That helps you to think through my wow model, which goes through your business's who, who your target audience is, your business's originality. So who you are and what lights you up in terms of aesthetics and your business's why of what do you want people to feel when they work with you? What kind of vibe do you want your graphics to have? What kind of vibe do you want your fonts to have? And so go and watch that video if you've got no idea about what the vibe is for your brand and what you want your audience to think about your business and who you want it to attract and all that. Um, but then once you've kind of got that clarity, then you can come into this video and kind of start thinking this stuff through. And so in essence, I want you to be thinking about firstly that fonts have voices. Um, this is really, really important to remember because sometimes people just pick fonts because they look 
okay together. And that's okay to do. But in essence, we should be going a layer back and thinking first, what is this font trying to say? Every single font is saying something. Some are saying less things, some are saying more things. I like to think of it as um, imagine like this um this grandmother who has like is like knitting and wearing her pearls and wearing like this beautiful um, vintage kind of outfit and then thinking of this like skater boy who's got <laughs> this is like an old example from when I was a teenager skater boy has got his pants down like halfway down his bottom and um, wearing like uh, all black clothes and maybe like a chain and kind of like it's a bit like huh. and so think of those two people they both have strong personalities, strong voices. And you probably wouldn't put both of those two people together in the same car and expect them to have a wonderful road trip. They absolutely could, where obviously human beings are beautiful people that could do whatever they wanted. But it's not like the obvious choice. You wouldn't you would usually just pair like a skater boy with maybe a shop assistant at a skate shop. They would get along okay, even if the skate shop assistant isn't like also wearing black and, and like real grungy, but they'll probably get along okay because they've got some stuff in common. And so using the same kind of thinking for your fonts, I know this sounds a little bit wild, but in essence, each different font is saying something. So try not to pair two fonts with wildly different voices, wildly different personalities together because they'll probably jar a little bit. They'll probably look like, why is there this cursive, beautiful font with this really grungy font? Um, and so what we can actually do instead is pick one font with a really strong voice and other another two fonts, another one font with a lesser voice. So a more just like if I was again to, to put the analogy towards people, like a person that's kind of like doesn't really rock the boat, just kind of chills, kind of gets along with everyone mostly. That kind of person is that kind of font is the kind of font that you would pair with a really big font, a really bold font, a really personalized font. Um, and so I'll put some examples on the screen if you're watching on YouTube here. But in essence, like pair that cursive font with a really like classic um, serif font rather than pairing it with a really grungy font that kind of like they're clashing a little bit in their vibes. So that's the first thing to remember is that fonts have voices and to make sure you don't pick too many fonts with too many voices. Instead, choose one voice and then pick other fonts that are going to back that up as kind of like less personality, less bold, but kind of just mixes it up and kind of is the same, kind of would get along with them if you would put them in the room, but aren't like jarring each other um, or aren't totally different. The next thing is to think about how you actually use those fonts. So some really important things to remember is first, Firstly, don't use cursive text a lot. <laughs> don't use tons and tons of cursive text in a whole sentence or a whole paragraph. Cursive text is not ultra readable and it's getting less and less readable as I've, I've heard that younger kids have more trouble reading cursive text because they're being less they're being less exposed to it and so as business owners we need to make decisions around the clarity of our business and making sure that we don't use too much cursive text for a long piece of text because it's harder to read um, and so I really recommend using cursive text maybe two or three words at a time and that's it kind of make it like I said at the start that accent font it's a kind of font that you might use just to kind of bring a bit of a pop into a design um, kind of bring a bit of focus into something um, and so don't get caught up on using cursive text over and over again, using it heaps. And when you are picking a cursive text and a cursive font, make sure that it actually is readable. Lots of cursive fonts aren't really that readable. And so if you're actually planning on using your text more than just a pretty kind of like thing in the corner of your design and actually want to use it to communicate, make sure that you test its readability. In most font websites, when you're choosing a font, if you're not just choosing it on Canva, you can actually like write down some keywords and it will display that font in those keywords. So you can kind of see if it works. For example, I always test things like my business name, my personal name and what I do. And I make sure that my that the font that I'm choosing works in that in those words, that those words like graphic design, White Deer, Jackie Norton, all look good in the font that I'm going to choose. So do that little test when you're picking cursive fonts as well. Another readability point is to make sure you don't use capitals all the time. Um, I use capitals for most of my headings, but I don't use it for a paragraph's worth of text. Ca capitals are just inherently harder to read altogether. And so making sure you're using sentence case or capitals sparingly. Um, capitals also have more of a yelly kind of vibe. So if you don't have a yelly brand, use lowercase text or sentence case text. So it's going to be a lot more readable avoid using that capitals all the time. Um, and so I'm just going to, if you're watching the YouTube version again, I'm going to pop up a slide on the screen. I usually reserve for my special paid masterclasses, but this is kind of a bit of an overview of lots of the fonts that you might see. Fonts come in a few different categories. I've mentioned a few of them already in terms of cursive, um, and that's really about it. And I've, I've mentioned the word serif, but you might not have had any clue what I meant. And this is what I mean. And you'll see that there is a few different versions of fonts and pretty much these are the key families of fonts.
fonts um, that are that most fonts can fit into these. So we've got the serif font. Serif font is that font with the little feet on the top and bottom of them. It's kind of like your classic Times New Roman kind of fonts. These fonts often have quite of a structured, professional, classy or trustworthy kind of voice to them. You've then got sans serif fonts, which is literally means without the serif. So those fonts that look that, that don't have little feet on them and they look more relaxed or professional, modern or clean or relatable. You've then got your cursive kind of script kind of fonts, so really kind of more formal looking script fonts. This can kind of feel proper or classy. Um, and then you've got your handwritten cursive. So those fonts that kind of look cursive, but they're more got a handwritten vibe to them. They're more rustic, they're more approachable. They tend to feel more relatable or friendly or feminine. Then you've got handwritten fonts. So just normal handwriting without kind of the cursive flair to them. These kind of feel more placeful or relaxed or childlike. And then you've got slab serif fonts. So slab serif fonts are kind of like the serif font but they're more slabby so they're more block like in the way that the serifs are rather than being dainty and these fonts can either have a bit of a strong or a sporty or a military vibe and you'll see that when you choose fonts that kind of pick up those vibes or those voices or those messages that personality you can kind of begin to tell a story with your branding about how you want it to feel how you want people to approach your business how you want your business to appear and so making those decisions not making them lightly not not crucializing them for for months and months on end but kind of just having this information in the back of your mind as you're choosing fonts can be really helpful and so think through the kind of voice you want your business to have and choose fonts that back up that voice then pick one font that's got a really strong voice and then some other fonts that have a bit of a less strong voice usually sans serif and serif fonts that are just kind of more of the, the plain versions of those are really great to pair with them more whether it's a really interesting serif font they're really popular at the moment or whether you're pairing it with a cursive or, or a slab serif font then choose more of a sans serif font to pair with that and it's going to work together really 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 well there is far more other things that kind of go into this but I find Find this is kind of a really great level that helps everyday people kind of step into this world and not feel too overwhelmed. And so if you're feeling really stuck, what you can do is just go into places like Pinterest and search phrases, search font pairings, search classic font pairings, search feminine font pairings and see what fonts that you can find and see if there's got any recommendations for you. Canva has some great ways that it helps you find fonts. It might recommend fonts to you or if you even search like serif font, it will come up with all of the serif fonts and you can kind of choose out of those. If you're getting really stuck, feel free to send me a message on Instagram. I'd love to kind of give you a little bit of feedback if you're wanting help but in essence thinking through these fonts and making really intentional decisions in in, in the font voice in not picking too many fonts and then picking roles to your fonts so like that heading that subheading slash accent and um, that body text font and using those quite consistently you can play around with the heading versus subheading font a little bit but keeping that body text font really consistent is important and then having that consistency across all your platforms so using the same fonts in your logo to your social media to your website to your flyers everything carries those same fonts if you are in that logo creation stage, choosing the fonts that look good in your logo will then help you to then apply those same fonts across the rest of your branding. So you don't need to reinvent the wheel when it comes to your branding and your overall vibe, your social media posts and all those different things. You can just use the same fonts you use in your logo because it will just look so, so consistent, so, so perfect and just really, really clear journey and recognizability there. And so if you're really struggling with this kind of thing and, and this has helped a little bit, but not totally, I would love to invite you. I have a totally free workshop that you can join. It's called the Seriously in Business Challenge because I believe that incredible graphics will help you to look seriously in business. It will help you to take your business seriously. It will help your audience to take your business seriously because when you look seriously in business, it can pay huge dividends into the way that people perceive your business, the value that you have, your professionalism, how long you've been in business, how much you're worthy of trust, how good you are at your product or service. All these things can be assumed when someone looks at your branding and your graphics. And so I want to help you to look seriously in business. So if you'd like some help to do that, just head to diydesignmybiz.com forward slash seriously challenge and you can sign up to watch this straight away. You'll literally pop your email in, it will send you the link and it will forward you to the page to watch the first video and then you can kind of get started. There's going to be a three-part video series. Again, it's totally free, 20 minute videos, really, really punchy, really, really full of incredible information that you need to know for your business. It will help you to kind of think about your fonts and think about your whole business, plus also learning some really key design principles that are going to make sure your business stands out and looks really professional. Plus, I also throw in a couple of really cool Canva hacks that I find every business owner really needs to know and you probably don't know them yet. So head over there now. You can watch that right now. You can like literally head over, pop your email in, sign up, 
and it will send you that straight video. And if you want to binge all of them, you can, or if you want to watch them once a day, I send you emails to remind you of those each and every day as they pop out. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you have, please feel free to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, because I am so excited to share with you even more of these things. And if you're listening to the podcast, please chuck me a rating as well, a review, because that's going to help me to find more people to share this wonderful information with so that their businesses can also stand out. And we can be a bunch of incredible business owners that are enjoying business, that are having fun, and that are creating incredible graphics that are doing our businesses justice and helping them to grow so thank you for joining me today and i'll see you next week for another episode bye